Adding the complex dimension of race to that of marriage reveals an entirely different set of conceptions about the meaning of citizenship. For generations, enslaved men and women had been legally deprived of marriage, their families disrupted at the whim of slave owners. After emancipation, many black women treasured the idea of solid and solidaristic relationships with men and children, as well as with siblings and aging parents. Most women, married or not, found themselves pushed into domestic work, their conditions emulating those of slavery. After Reconstruction ended in 1877, and the South resorted to Jim Crow legislation to impose segregation between blacks and whites, the community lives of black women took on enhanced importance. When in 1897, the infamous Supreme Court decision in Plessy v. Ferguson affirmed the constitutionality of separate but equal accommodations for African Americans, African Americans sought to wield influence in and outside their communities by stretching the domestic code. Marriage for African American women involved engagement in households that already served their communities. Facing problems of widespread poverty, minimal educational facilities, lack of health care, and endemic unemployment, educated middle-class African-American women devoted themselves to what some have called uplift for the race. They used their talent, their economic resources, and their educations to make the world a better place for African Americans in general, not just for their own families. They engaged in volunteer societies in huge numbers. They exercised political voice through churches and, where possible, schools. Respectability for these women, as historian Stephanie Shaw has pointed out, meant engagement with the world not disengagement from it. Knowing that sons would face a discriminatory labor market, many families sacrificed to educate their daughters to become teachers and nurses, jobs that they often held before and after marriage. Community work, as historian Deborah Gray White points out, became a part of the lives of married African-American women an important element of their definition of citizenship. Perhaps the best example of this form of citizenship comes from Ida B. Wells Barnett, the Ida B. Wells of the railroad car protest who we've already met. Born in Mississippi in 1862, just two years after Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Ida Wells was 16 years old when her parents died leaving her to care for two younger brothers and a sister. Luckily, her parents had educated her well. She pretended she was 18 and got a job as a teacher that paid enough so that she could support her brother's educations as carpenters. Still in her 20s, Ida Wells moved to Memphis, where racism shaped her life. At first, she earned a living by publishing and editing a newspaper that circulated within the African-American community. But when the newspaper was just beginning to make a go of it, white neighbors who didn't want any business competition began to threaten her. Then they attacked and lynched three African-American businessmen who owned small shops in her neighborhood. Ida B. Wells could not keep quiet. She continued to publish her newspaper, using it as a voice to expose the crime of lynching. Death threats followed, and Ida Wells was ultimately driven from the city of Memphis. In New York, where she settled, she became a loud opponent of lynching. Marriage and the birth of four children did not stop her. She was a founding member of the NAACP. By the 1920s, her activities had stimulated a broad national anti-lynching campaign 
that drew congressional and government attention.